There's a fairly big misconception that Australian gun laws have been incredibly successful. Well, President Obama expected to speak about his renewed push for tougher gun laws in tonight's State of the Union address. He recently has cited Australia's gun control laws as a model for what could be done here. It turns out it's not that black and white, so I thought I'd go through the statistics and see what the data says. And if you can hear traffic in the background, then too fucking bad, because Game of Thrones is on tonight and I want to get this done first. I'll give you a quick bit of history for context. So here's a segment from a video I did a few months ago. Australia has always had a fairly low rate of violent crime, and gun laws throughout the 20th century wasn't really much of a political issue at all. Although fully automatic weapons were banned around 1930, with the exception of Tasmania. Between 1984 and 1996, there were five massacres involving guns, with the most notable being the 1996 Port Arthur Massacre in Tasmania, in which 35 people were killed and 23 were wounded. This is when former Prime Minister John Howard said enough is enough. In 1996, the government introduced a ban on all semi-automatic rifles and pump-action shotguns, as well as a tightly restrictive system of licensing and ownership control. Due to our constitution, compensation must be given for property taken over, so the government spent around $500 million on a buyback program that was paid for by taxpayers through a one-off increase in our Medicare levy. Let's start with murder victims, according to the Australian Institute of Criminology. Over the past 18 years, the rate of homicide incidents per 100,000 decreased from 1.9 in the early 90s to the second lowest recorded rate of 1.3 in the mid-2000s. Since 1993, the number of homicide victims has been on a gradual downward trend both before and after the NFA, with a spike in 1999. If the NFA had been successful in dropping murder rates, one would expect to see a sharp decline from about 97 onwards but it certainly hasn't. Going back as far as 1915, the downward trend of homicide involving firearms as a percentage started dropping back from a peak in 1968 at about 44%, down to around 16% in 2003. As one would expect, after 97, the rate of homicides involving firearms dropped. But the story doesn't end there. Looking at the relative use of knives compared with firearms to commit homicide instead of total numbers, firearms have seen a downward trend from about 27% to 10%, whereas use of knives or sharp implements have gone up from 33% to 45%. So the weapon of choice has merely been replaced. It's important to note though that although there appears to be a substitution of weapon of choice, that net deaths have still decreased. A lot of people incorrectly think that knife attacks have gone up, and that's technically true by percentage of use, but on aggregate, it's still a net reduction. Obviously, homicide is reducing, but so has the crime rate in general over the past 20 years. Looking at the victims of violent crime rates, there has been a reduction in total homicide of 0.7 per 100,000. I mean, there's even been a reduction in unarmed robbery of 16.1 per 100,000. But to say that the introduction of the NFA was the sole cause of the reduction in crime that's been dropping steadily for decades prior is just fucking retarded. There are obviously a lot of sociological factors at play, otherwise there would be a significant drop. Suicide rates don't paint a very pretty picture either, unfortunately. From the Hunter Institute of Mental Health, sourcing data from the Australian Bureau of Statistics, suicide rates haven't changed much. Going back to 1989, suicide rates for men were roughly 20 per 100,000 and 5 per 100,000 for women. And as you can see, not exactly a sharp drop when the NFA came in. Here's what's really fucking interesting though. Looking at the method of suicide from 1979 to 1998, there's a very clear downward trend of suicide caused by firearm and hangings were on the increase even before the NFA. I'm not even going to begin to speculate on what caused this, because I honestly have no idea. Feel free to make any suggestions, because it's got me stumped. I've been reading a bunch of studies and been trawling through the numbers for a few days now, and there's all sorts of things I could bring up. Most of the studies done claiming that gun laws have been effective really only focus on the fact that gun-related crime and suicide by firearm have gone down, while completely ignoring the overall downward trend in the decrease of crime. Suicide, on the other hand, is a whole other kettle of fish and beyond the scope of this video. 
One last study I'll show you titled Australian Firearms Buyback and Its Effect on Gun Deaths, published on the Journal of Contemporary Economic Policy, stated that their meta-analysis came to the conclusion that the NFA did not have any large effect on reducing firearm homicide or suicide rates when including trends. Tightening gun laws has more or less been useless when factoring in trends with the exception of mass murders. In the 10 years prior to the NFA, there were a total of 8 mass murders resulting in 72 deaths. The 10 years following the NFA, there were 2 mass murders resulting in 15 deaths. Some would argue that arson attacks have gone up, which is technically true, but we've had like, what, 3 in the past 20 years compared to the 1 in the 20 years before that, so not exactly a large sample size. Personally, I think the overregulation of firearms here in Australia is just fucking stupid, really. I believe in the right to defend your property, and with the exception of reducing mass murders, they haven't really done much more than just make things difficult for responsible gun owners. And I don't think removing gun laws or changing our constitution to include something like the Second Amendment will ever happen here. Australians, generally speaking, just don't have the same relationship with firearms as the USA. Even many conservatives in Australia back gun laws. But what are your thoughts? Are gun laws here good? Are they retarded? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. So until next time, cheers.